Last couple of days, the internet at large has finally kind of turned an eye to me for the first time in a major way in a long time in an actual positive light. Now, this video in stream is not going to be about that, all right? I'm not going to be talking about how this other guy, this other content creator completely screwed up his life by doing messed up stuff, and basically I had two pretty epic looking tweets that, yes, one of them was directly to him and one wasn't, it was more indirect, but two epic tweets that kind of went crazy on Twitter, one of which has like 6,000 likes, one has like over 17,000 likes, and major content creators, including guys like Hee Hee Productions and PewDiePie, uh, amongst others, have been, like, referencing me. Boogie said it was his favorite tweet ever. You know you messed up when DSP, out of all people, drags you on Twitter. <laughs> you know you messed up when DSP, out of all people, drags you on Twitter. <laughs> um, this is the first time in years that anyone has really come out and said anything positive about me, because sadly, as you guys and gals know, if you are longtime fans of mine, um, there's a lot of bullshit and slander and all kinds of crap uh, about me all over the internet, all right? People are like, it's. I guess it's not Hee Hee Productions. They say it some other way. I have no idea how they say it. I, I never saw it before. I'm just saying big content creators, all right, have been referencing me in a good light. And I'm like, this is a great opportunity because I've got over 2,000 new Twitter followers. I've got hundreds of new followers on my YouTube channel. I know people are going to be coming out to check out streams. Um, and if they don't see that, you know, I basically take this opportunity to do something positive and kind of almost clear my name for the last seven years of slander that's been against me on YouTube in particular, but of course now it's all over the internet. I almost feel that sadly, all right, that sadly there's no, not going to be another opportunity to do it. Because the thing is, there's so much crap that's said and done about me all the time. And yes, every once in a while on a stream or in a video, I can kind of denounce it and tell you the real story behind it. But the funny thing is that some of these things I've talked about at length in the past and People just don't know. Oh, well, Phil addressed it. Well, we ignore the fact that he addressed it, and we just say that it's still a fact. I'm like, but no, I actually talked about this two, three, four years ago. I explained the whole situation from start to finish, and people are still like, well, it didn't happen, right? So the purpose of tonight's stream and tonight's video here is to basically take a lot of those things that common things, misconceptions about me, slanderous statements, memes, things about dark side Phil that have been said over the last seven years and kind of try to at least denounce them, debunk them, or at least tell you the truth about that situation. Now, you don't have to believe me. And the bottom line is there will be thousands of people out there that probably will never believe me no matter what I say and do anyway. There's nothing I can do about that. But at least I think this is a good place to start for those who are now maybe, oh, I heard about Dark Side Phil. He made these epic tweets. Give me money. I need that money. Give me money. I need that money. Give me money. I need that money. Also, this is honestly going to be a, a, almost like a weight off of me because I, like I said, I usually never talk or address about this stuff. Or address this stuff. Excuse Bullshit. me. Bullshit. And... For me to finally be able to get it off my chest to talk about some of this stuff publicly is going to be a good thing. Now, a few things. Number one, I will be accepting, you know, contributions during the stream as usual. Cheering, subbing, and tipping will all be allowed and everything. For seven years, I've been the butt of the internet's joke because of the way that I used to act seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. When I started on YouTube, I was a very obstinate opinionated asshole who didn't want to think outside of my own realm of very narrow perspective and I didn't want to walk in another person's shoes or see things from another perspective and I would regularly at the, the dawn of when I really had my highest popularity um on YouTube all right I was an asshole I'll openly admit that I used to go out and say oh screw everyone who plays Minecraft they're a bunch of immature idiots who the hell would ever want to play Minecraft right why do all the girls in here have incredibly dyed hair so they look like fucking cartoon or anime characters oh because you appeal to a small audience of children uh to make your money makes sense <laughs> children who have no money and don't actually buy anything based off the ad revenue that you make on your videos so it's completely worthless oh anyway so what are you gonna do with the rest of your life once no one cares about minecraft anymore and your entirety of your existence has been based off of making videos about one singular game oh how does it feel to know that everything you've ever done on the internet that's notable was completely and utterly a waste of time that's so ignorant that's stupid um you know what i mean why would i say that but that's dumb shit i used to do 
oh my god, screw Hideo Kojima, he makes terrible games. I would say stuff like that, and people would take it as, like, serious shit, and they would then hate on me, and they would make tons of videos about me, and they would hate me for that. And then, over the years, different things happened. Like, the This Is How You Don't Play movement, where people would take my gameplay and unfairly, honestly, edit it together to only show moments where I really sucked, or I was doing stupid shit in a game, and I was just, you know, talking out of my ass. And those would go viral on YouTube, and sadly, that would now make people think that, like, there's no valid content that I put out there, when in reality, that was a skewed perspective. Now, it was a true perspective. The things that were in those videos were taken right out of my videos. It wasn't like people were adding stuff in that wasn't in the videos. But taking stuff out of perspective of an entire playthrough makes you look bad, right? So really, it was 2012 when those style of videos, those this is how you don't play videos and all that started. And you know what? At the time, I was so angry about it. And the truth of the matter is, these days, I don't give a shit. Bullshit. People can do whatever they want with my footage. I don't want... Obviously, I, I would like people to get permission first or whatever. But it's apparent YouTube's never going to do anything about it. People are going to be able to make these, these, these nasty negative montages about me no matter what they want to do, right? I am not going to put up with this shit anymore. And I'm not going to allow any of these fucking people to think that it is okay to make this negative shit about me. Because this is what happens, right? Shame on you. If you've ever made a this is how you don't play about me, if you ever decided to follow me, make a clone account on Twitter, do this childish shit on YouTube, if you thought it was funny to dox me, if you thought it was the DDoS attacks were funny, you almost got me killed. You. Yes, you. You're responsible. And if you are a human and you have morality in you, you should understand that. You contributed to it. Because no one fucking thought of me in a negative light until that shit fucking started. No one. People understood it was off-color jokes. And it was just Phil trying to be funny. And, you know, I'm not... I've told you, I'm an imperfect human. I'm certainly not perfect. There have been times when I made mistakes. That doesn't mean that people should fucking die. So, fuck you. But the bottom line is this, is that... Since then, since the This Is How You Don't Play movement got popular, now what people have done... Oh, well, Phil's an easy target. We now know from the This Is How You Don't Play movement he's got no defense for himself. So now we're going to go a step further. Instead of only doing things that are going to be related to his gameplay, now we're going to take things out of his personal life that he reveals. And we're going to skew them. We're going to lie about them. Bullshit. We're going to make him look like a real scumbag to the face of the internet by saying all kinds of crazy shit that really has no factual basis. And the Bullshit. bottom line is most of the really nasty things that have ever been said about me never had any factual basis. They were taken out of something that was skewed or something that had no actual concrete evidence, but people just believe it because it's been said so many times. And I'm not a person who's going to sit here on a stream and just talk about the negative shit constantly because I want to be a positive guy. I want to put out fun gameplay. I want to cover the new releases. I want to have cool throwback sessions. I don't want to my, my entire existence on the internet to be defending myself against people who are just saying ridiculous stuff. Bullshit! There, there's a sick motherfucker on the internet called Tevin who likes to illegally reach restream my fucking streams and has an army of fucking trolls who are the only reason why he has any notoriety is because he copies my shit and he eggs his trolls on to do negative shit like this to come to my stream and to basically make fun of my girlfriend and do nasty shit. It's his fault that this kind of stuff happens and anyone who supports that kind of fucking content is a mentally ill asshole who has no fucking conscience or morals. And the bottom line is the only reason he does it is because he knows he can get away with it because YouTube won't shut down his streams even though what he does is completely illegal. They don't care. YouTube does not give a shit. So he runs away. He can't do it on Twitch anymore. He's banned from Twitch from doing it. So now he has to go other places where basically it's like the Wild West and they won't listen and they won't shut down stuff that's illegal or bullying or, or you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and it sucks because I really, we were, we were looking forward to today a lot. And basically, after two games, she was so upset. She was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I'm not having fun because I can't. If I say a word, people people criticize me about anything that I say, my looks, and, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. So, uh, it sucks, you know? But it is what it is. You have complete fucking utter losers on the internet who will insult people who've never done a damn thing to hurt anyone. And it makes me angry, and it obviously upsets her, but there's nothing we can do to control it, and I apologize for that, guys. Tonight is the exception where I'm striking back, I finally feel like because there's at least a positive vibe around Dark Side Phil for the first time in some seven fucking years on the internet. That finally, today, I can kind of come out and say, Fuck your mother. Are you a functional retard? Seriously, like, that guy is such a two-faced fat piece of shit. He's black, shut up! 
dumb fuck morons. Fuck you. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Alexander Ross, he cheered. He says, 913 viewers in the stream just started. Wow. See, I don't I'm not, I don't look at viewership. That's another thing. I don't look at viewership on my streams. So I have no idea how many people are on the stream right now. Bullshit! Honestly, let me take a look because I have not looked at stream numbers all day. My God, the stream numbers were terrible. Wow, what happened? Bullshit! The one thing that I want to say is off limits here tonight, because this is the very truth, is things that is private information about other people that I can't reveal. So, oh my God, I want secret behind the scenes dish on what happened with your ex-girlfriend. I can't do that. I can't do that because sadly, you know, that's, that's private information. That's not just me. That's someone else too. I want information about your wife. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. That's, that's unfair to someone else who's not here, who is not part of this. Uh, to give information like this. And the thing is, yes, the sl sadly, the slander over the years has come into my life with my personal relationships, my family and everything. All this has been affected by these people who say nasty shit about me all the time. <laughs> and they've been crazy. Oh, I got a message on my friends. Oh, I'm going to tell everyone to get to the stream. Everyone, oh, oh, cats on the stream, cats on the stream. Back before I ever live streamed, back before I ever did any direct capture, way back when, all right, um, I used to make racial jokes, okay? I did, I used to make racial jokes. Now, the racial jokes that I made, I used to call myself an equal opportunity offender, meaning I would make a joke about one culture or race and then another culture or race, but I would also make a joke about my own culture. You know, I'm Polish and Italian, and I would make those kind of jokes during gameplay as well. And, you know, what people will do over the years, they'll take clips out of context, all right? And they will put a clip out there completely out of context of a playthrough and make one little, this is one joke Phil made in 2010. Look at what a horrible racist he is, right? I hate this shit. This shit, seriously, like, it pisses me off and disturbs me because I hate racism. You know, I joke about it all the time in my playthroughs. I'll, I'll make racist jokes, but I really hate real racism. This shit pisses me off. I really hate real racism. This shit pisses me off. The epic adventures of Ding Dong Wong. No, you killed Ding Dong. How dare you kill Ding Dong Wong? Ding Dong Wong must come back for revenge. Ding Dong Tolly Chan, Chicken Chai Chai. Ding Cho 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 La. Hello. Come, look. I fixed you up. Oh, thank you. Hello. Please give me good outfit for undercover. I. <laughs> Super the wow. I am black and I am good at basketball. Look at the stylish. Layup. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. It's a Durka party. I'm a see ya, I'm a hey Oh, it's a lamb of the Mia Ma. Oh yes, here are Al Qaeda cops. Today we are out to catch the infidels. We have a hot tip that there is a domestic disturbance at the home of a Christian. In China, they say, rashness brings success to few. In China, they say, Chiggy Chang, Wang, Charlie Chang, Chika Chaka Chuka Cha. Shut the fuck up. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space, and now look at this. Their greed has had the artifact turn everyone into necromorphs. So now I, the last remaining Nazi, must exterminate them. Hello, Jew. Oh sweet, I got the, uh, more ammo for this gun now. That's you, fight me now, Chu! <laughs> you have no legs. Give me your money. You've hoarded it for far too long. Next time, keep your balls in your pants. <laughs> Why are you carrying your balls next to you? You stupid moron. You big-nosed freak. <laughs> Ah, Isaac Heimler. That's my name. <laughs> the bottom line is, and this is the truth of the matter, in my lifetime, I've had more friends that were not white than white. Because I actually grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, which was a city that, as I was growing up, became more and more multicultural. My elementary school, my high school, always had a multicultural group. My best friend when I was growing up was Puerto Rican. 
Um, I had, you know, African-American friends. I had uh, friends from all different Asian cultures. Indian, Laotian. Um, oh, man, what was Van Arak? Vietnamese. Um, you know, I've had f friends of every nationality in my life, okay? But people will always take one th little thing out of context or whatever and say that I'm a racist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest, and I will admit this to this, now I will publicly say this, one of the biggest mistakes that I actually feel that I made in my early career as a content creator is that I was making Nazi jokes, all right? They're not funny. I Now I know that. But the thing is, I used to be a very adamant listener to the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern, as you guys know, if you listen to him, is a very risque guy and he does very risque things. And he used to do segments on his show where someone would impersonate a Nazi. And he would say ridiculous things that would be over the top. And, oh my God, but the joke was that it's not a real Nazi. It's a guy impersonating a Nazi and personally doing over the top stuff that we all agree is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you don't know, Howard Stern is Jewish. So for him to have Nazi jokes on his show kind of makes sense. I'm not Jewish. For me to make stupid Nazi jokes in videos that I've done and stuff is not smart. It's dumb. It's incredibly fucking stupid. And at least I'm proud to say I haven't made a joke like that in nine years, okay? But people will still bring it up to this day and say that Phil is a racist and Phil is totally, you know, he hates the Jews. Did you ever see that video that he made where he was playing the Dead Space 2 uh, demo and he was pretending to be Isaac Himmler, the last, uh, the last remaining Nazi, and saying that because the Jews ran rampant across the universe that they infected the whole universe with a necrovirus and he wants to turn on the ovens and burn all the Jews. It actually happened. I, I, I you know, I'll always fess up to that. It's, it's out there public on the internet. You can't hide it. It's something very incredibly stupid that I did. But it was actually a, a video based on the exact shtick that was done on the Howard Stern show. I, some of the things I actually say in that video are literally lifted from the Howard Stern show, copy pasted into my video. Okay. Now, what's funny is some people actually to this day will say that stuff's funny. I, I don't think it is. I don't. I don't anymore. Back then, I was more immature. Like I said, I, I you know, Howard Stern and everything all being in, in line with that stuff. I used to think that that stuff was funny. All right. I don't think it is um, anymore. I've grown up. I've matured. I'm not that kind of person anymore. But at that time, I thought that it was funny. Now, here's the thing. That, that actually got me banned off of a, a website that was not YouTube. It got me banned off of a website called Blip.TV. You may have heard of them. It's a business that existed back then. And what happened was I had been doing YouTube videos from 2008 to 2010 as a hobby. I had never made a dime doing it. I had never monetized any videos. Well... I wanted to monetize my videos because I got laid off. I've been working at an office job for almost five years. And I got laid off out of nowhere unexpectedly. And the under I was kind of the underdog of the internet because people supported me. They loved my YouTube videos at that point and really wanted to see me succeed. Okay. And so what ended up happening was I went to Blip TV and I started uploading my videos there because on Blip you could monetize your gameplay videos. You couldn't do that on YouTube back then in 2010 unless you had a specialized partnership with a third-party company. So I went to Blip, and within one month of me uploading these my gameplay videos to Blip, I was making good money, and actually I was the second-ranked guy on the fucking website under the Nostalgia Critic. The Nostalgia Critic was number one, I was number two within a month, which was pretty insane. Um, but what ended up happening was I put out that video, that Dead Space 2 demo video with that kind of jokes and commentary in it, and what happened was my trolls, which I've always had trolls, even back then when I was white hot popular, I had trolls. My trolls staged a campaign, which they later admitted publicly was a fake campaign. They mass emailed Blip TV, pretending to be hundreds of upset people, saying, how dare you have someone on your site who's making this kind of comedy and kind of, kind of commentary and stuff like that. Um, okay. And it sucks because, you know, they got, they got me. You know, Blip TV management saw these hundreds of complaints. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. They watched the video. They're like, okay, get rid of them. And they kicked me off the site, all right? It sucks. I was I was banned from Blip TV because of troll activities. Bullshit. The bottom line was the thing I got banned for is pretty heinous. I agree jokes about Nazis and shit is not funny. I, at that point in my life, nine years ago, was very immature and thought that it was. And thought that I, if I emulate Howard Stern, I should be all right. But... Obviously, it's wrong. And the thing is, now, in 2019, I could come out and say, my God, that's so stupid. Why did I do that? But that's something always that people try to say. Phil was a racist. Phil always used to do videos that were racist content and stuff. No. 
In fact, it was a rarity when I did stuff like that. That's why it was funny. And every once in a while, I would go out of control and do stuff like that. But now in the modern era, I can fess up to it and tell you guys I'm not like that anymore. I realized how stupid and, and dumb that shit was. You know, it's kind of similar where people say Phil used to always be over-sexualized. It's true. I used to be very over-sexualized when I was starting up videos on YouTube back in the day 10 years ago. It was all about getting that teen audience to watch you. So talking about the size of the tits on that girl. Welcome to your deflowering ceremony, your highness. What? Raging boner. And you know, sex joke here and there, nipple here, you know, all that stuff was very popular back then. But now I don't do it anymore. I phased it out of my content. It's hilarious because I, I now do video game playthroughs regularly every day on Twitch. And people in the stream chat will make sexual comments about things going on. And I don't. I ignore it. I stay away from it. Bullshit! Oh my god! She's got a couple of assets. Um, in 2012, I made public my relationship with a, a woman at that time who was my girlfriend. Okay, and she very much became a part of my content over a five-year span that I was involved with, with this woman. She went by Panda Lee on the internet. That was her, her, her nickname or whatever. And there's always been lies and slander and complete horrific nonsense regarding my relationship with Panda Lee, which is horseshit. And the thing is, it's in my past. I mean, I, we haven't been together in over two years i now have a, a married to a beautiful lovely woman named cat and my life is great but the thing is people to this day still fucking bring up this bullshit so tonight for the first time ever i'm debunking this bullshit all right the first thing that everyone fucking says to me is that phil you first met panda lee when she was underage she was under the age of 18 when you first started talking to her you were grooming her so that you would finally go out with her and all this shit and all of that is complete and utter fucking bullshit nonsense false the truth of the matter is that back then this was a different era all right it really was it was a different era of youtube um and back then, people used to use YouTube private messaging. I don't, no one even uses that anymore. Pre sending me a private message on YouTube. I, I haven't even looked at a YouTube private message in a great part of five years. I'm not even exaggerating. Okay. Um, so, she actually, as a fan, a viewer, private messaged me on my DSP gaming channel. I believe the very first date was, the, it was like like November of... 2011 November of 2011 okay and I didn't know who she was basically she was just someone friendly as someone who I had talked to back and forth via messaging for about two months and then after that we wanted to start talking a little bit more so we started texting each other and you know it just grew from there and then we dated on and off from the year of 2012 I say probably mid, or early to mid 2012 all the way through 2014 when eventually she moved in with me as we moved across the country out here to the state of Washington and she lived with me from 2014 until early 2017 when we broke up okay um and during that period of time we had highs and lows and one of the misconceptions that everyone tells me is that oh Phil you you, you she was underage when you started talking to her and and dating her and doing stuff with her behind the scenes and you're a pedophile and all this crazy shit it's all bullshit and the thing is, if anyone actually had a fucking brain in their head who said this, they would do the math and figure it out. She's always made public her birthdays. She would do social media posts. Sometimes there were videos about her birthday. Like, this was a common thing that would happen is that you would know that she was, if her birthday's in late August, and she was 18 years old the first time I ever even spoke to her in a YouTube message. I never knew her before she, when she was underage and never even heard of her. This is, it's ludicrous that people would just make this shit up. And try to slander me and shit like that because they want to hurt me, basically. But no, the truth of the matter is, I never, ever spoke with, with her until she was 18 years old. She messaged me, not the other way, she messaged me on YouTube when she was 18. And we talked for months and then eventually we started dating for a while. Until it got more serious years later, like I said. And then we moved in together in 2014. So, you know, in reality... It's, you know, the thing is, where's the evidence? There's no evidence of anything here. The thing is, where's the evidence? There's no evidence of anything here. Because it doesn't exist. It's not true. You can look up publicly and find out, what, you know, when her her birthday is. That was always public information. And if you do the math, you see, what you know, when we started dating, she was 18. Late, when, we, when we moved in, she was 20. She turned 21 later that year. We celebrated her 21st birthday at a restaurant. She had a drink out for the first time. So it's ludicrous bullshit. Now... 
One thing I will publicly admit is that we had a very big age gap. I was roughly just under 11 years older than her. And honestly, at first, the relationship was great and it didn't work out. I honestly will tell you to this day because I think we were too much of an age gap apart. She had ideas of what she wanted to do with her life and stuff that I was far past that. I wanted to have a more settled life where we're just kind of settled in, in, in a home and it's an adult life. You work, you pay your bills, you go out every once in a while and have fun. While she was more the adventurous type, she wanted to constantly travel and she wanted to do all shit that we couldn't do. I couldn't afford to do it. And we just grew apart over the years. And it's the bottom line is it didn't work out, I think, mostly um, because of the, her age, the age difference. I think that's what it was, is that, you know, having that big amount of an age gap. At first, it was fun because we were dating. So she would come and visit me and we'd spend some time. Every once in a while, I would go and visit her and we'd go on these trips and stuff together and it worked out nice. But then when we finally started living together and we kind of realized maybe we weren't as compatible as we thought because we were such a, a big age gap, all right? Bullshit! So I walk through, I go all the way to the, to the back of the emergency area where they've got her in a room and I go in and she's conscious, but she's kind of loopy. You could tell they did something, they drugged her or something because she wasn't, no panic or nothing, you know, no anxiety or nothing. She was just like, oh, like loopy like this, right? Um, so I, you know, obviously you so said you're okay. You didn't fall, you didn't hit your head or nothing, right? No, just, you know, she happens. It sucks because it happens every once in a while. And now this is the worst one she's ever had. So it may be that she has to go see, you know, her doctor and, and try to get some kind of thing to take care of it. Because the, the, the bottom line is with anxiety attacks, they suck. The reason that they suck is there's really no way to cure them. We had already broken up in early 2017. All right, we had, we had already broken up. And when we had broken up, we didn't make it public because we didn't want drama. We knew if we made it public after being together for almost five years that it was going to cause monstrous drama and people were going to be all up in our shit and try, you know, keep in mind over the years I'd been swatted. Our family members had been swatted. People who didn't even live with, with, with me and my ex had been swatted as a result of just being related to us. So we were like, there's no way that we could disclose that we're breaking up because they'll probably be trying to find out moving arrangements of where she's moving and all kinds of fucked up shit. Okay, so we didn't announce when we broke up. We purposely didn't to keep it hidden because we didn't want people to be fucking around with our lives. All right. But there was one particular day when I was streaming. I believe I was doing like a podcast and I get a call. All right. The call is from my ex's job saying your ex, you know, had a medical issue. And we need you to come pick her up. And I'm like, well, first of all, she's my ex. We don't go out anymore. So why am I getting this call? So apparently there was no one else. None of her friends wanted to help her or whatever. I don't know the deal. I don't know the truth of the matter behind the scenes at all. Okay. Uh, at that point, my ex was in the process of moving out of the house. Like she had some of her stuff out already. And she was staying somewhere else temporarily. But she was kind of half in, half out at this time. You know, and then I broke up with Leanna because I needed to play Fallout 4. And it was like, how much is enough? Like, what are you trying to prove here, God? Phil, why don't you rent out your extra room? That room is still full of her shit, which she's never coming back for. She left here in a huff, taking only the stuff she wanted, all right, um, and left a bunch of junk for me. And th that room has shelving, de a desk, a ton of shit from her business, a ton of stuff that's just lying around. I'm not talking, oh, tons of sellable soap that I can sell for a profit. It's junk. It's stuff she tried to make and it failed, but she never fucking threw it out. It's ingredients, colorants, thing, you know, things that I'm never going to do anything with and I need to throw out, but I haven't had a chance because I'm working my ass off. You know, I'm here every day, work, 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 work to try to pay my bills and make ends meet because I'm by myself now. And I haven't even had a chance to clean out her office or do anything in there because I'm just too busy. It was almost like we were living together but we were a couple. It was more like we were living together as roommates. All right. And I know that sounds really fucked up. So I was like, well, I, I guess I'll do the nice thing. I'll be the nice guy. I'll go and get her and figure out what the hell's going on. By the time that I had gotten to her job, I had to pay for an Uber and everything. By the time that I got to her job, she was already at the hospital. So I took the car because she, I, by the way, I was still letting her drive my car to go, despite the fact that we were broken up. She was still driving my car. I was that nice of a guy. 
I go to the hospital to find out what the hell's actually going on, and I guess she had had a panic attack. Now, this is all public information. We talked about it two years ago. I'm not revealing anything that hasn't already been revealed, all right? Apparently, she had had a panic attack, and it was probably in regards to the fact that not only was she stressed out at work, but we had broken up other things. You know, all these factors had come into play. Um, and, you know, when I showed up, essentially what happened was nothing. Phil, without permission, went online and disclosed a medical issue with his girlfriend slash fiance. Because at the time we were we were supposedly engaged, even though we had broken up, people thought we were still engaged. Um, and gave all her medical history to everyone on the internet, and then said that he's not giving permission for her to ever have an ambulance come and pick her up ever again. That from now on, no no one should ever call the emergency line, but instead they should just hand her a pill and leave her alone. Like, what the fuck? Where did you get that from? The story that I told. Like, that's not even close to what happened, all right? I was concerned that here's someone who I'm already broken up with. I went out of my way to help her. I didn't have to. She wasn't, we weren't together anymore. But I went out of my fucking way to go help her, all right? And I basically get slammed for having my concerns over her financial well-being because I know she's going to get a giant bill from the hospital when they didn't do anything. They literally didn't do a fucking thing for her besides hand her a pill at the store where she had her fucking panic attack. It's, it's preposterous. Now, the other thing is people saying, oh, well, you know, that's all well and good, but, you know, she, you, know uh, you didn't have permission to do that. Well, then why, literally why, when I was here... On my stream, talking about it publicly, was she on her social media posting up, don't worry everyone, I'm okay. There was a picture of her with her hospital bracelet on. Don't worry everyone, I'm okay. You know, here to, because it was okay. Because there was always permission given, but you, people are fucking assholes. You know? You liar, you. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> Alright, now moving on. Alright. Let's talk a little bit about Project 7. Because I hate to tell you guys this, but I've already addressed this before. Project 7 was in, in the whole gamut of the time that I did stuff for YouTube. Project 7 was the one time when I said, I want to do something not by myself, but collaborate with other talented people. And I want to make a something that's not related to um, video games, not related to any kind of content like that whatsoever. Instead, what I want is to do a creative series. And so I teamed up with my then co-op partner, John Rambo, as well as our kind of colleague he's sometimes a co-op partner but mostly we knew him from playing street fighter howard as well as teaming up with howard's friends one of which was his cousin um in a group called respect the pact and we made this show called project seven now it was a lot of work and a lot of time there's a lot of writing and drama and all kinds of stuff involved behind the scenes as always whenever you're doing a big creative project like this all right but for what i've heard is that people say to this day say, well, Phil scammed his his friends, or he ripped off his friends and never paid them for anything, and that's why they they hate him to this day. Bullshit. That's complete and utter fucking bullshit. All right. First of all, John Rambo. He and I had a long-standing work relationship outside of Project Seven, where was he would come and do the Smart Guys wrestling podcast with me once a week, and then we would do some kind of, of gameplay together, co-op gameplay, whether it was co-op commentary or co-op, you know, a game that was co-op, whatever it may be. I will now tell you guys, he was handsomely paid, handsomely paid for all of that stuff. When we first started, he got paid 50% of everything that we made money on. He made ha He got half of what I made. So every Saturday, John comes over. If we made a ridiculous amount of money on what we did that day, he got half, okay? That's just me being very transparent here. He always got half. I thought that was fair. Even though you could say, oh, well, Phil should make more because he's the YouTuber and he's the one who's putting the content up and doing the uploading work and he's the one who has the internet presence and all of that. I didn't care. I wanted him to get make half because I cared that much about him being being my friend and coming and doing this fun, creative stuff together. And I wanted him to financially have some help and stuff. So I gave him half. All right. Now, sadly, what ended up happening was later on with, with my relationship with Machinima, my old YouTube partnership company, they started refusing to even give me stats on how much money I was making on my videos. That's how bad Machinima got near the end. They wouldn't even fucking come. All right. And say, all right, here's, here's, how much money you made this month on each video. They wouldn't even give me that data. They'd say it's not available anymore. So then what John and I did is we would say, okay, let's figure out together 
a fair amount of money for you to come do this every week because we can't figure out the actual half anymore. It's not even possible to figure it out. Instead, let's just say, okay, let's make an arrangement where every time you come visit and we do this co-op work together, I'll pay you this amount of money. And that's what we did probably for the last two years that we did co-op. We had to do it that way. So like the first two years, he was making half. And the second two years, he was making a negotiated amount that he wanted. This was his idea, his amount that he wanted to make. Okay, so there you go. In regards to that. And by the way, I don't think that anyone ever, I don't think that John ever publicly said anything like I never paid him or anything. That's bullshit. Like John himself never said that. He never said that Phil never paid me for the work. I think John was always upfront and honest. He never said how much, but he always was very honest about it. Okay. Um, so I don't understand why people th to this day will say that I ripped off my friends and I didn't pay them. It's not exactly the truth. Okay. So We've been hanging out for a couple years before that playing games. We're just kind of transitioning into now we're going to be playing games, but recording games, you know. Um, and I did this stuff for from 2008 when we started YouTube. I did this for probably a couple years for nothing. He signs on with Machinima a few years later. And I had to come to him and ask because we're, we're still doing videos. And I was like, since you're getting something for this, do you feel that I should get a percentage of that? For my efforts on here, right? Mm -hmm. So we make a, an agreement, which will be basically half of the month, half of the month's co-op income. So what happens is he takes out taxes from that amount um, and cuts it in half, right? And I get half of that. But for instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, I will get a percentage of what was made in March. That does not include residuals, like for months coming up. Like for instance, if those videos make more money in April or or, or uh, June and July, okay, like that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? Yeah. This went on for a little while. And again, not exactly fifty percent if you throw it out there, but this goes on for a little while. Then he says to me. Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore, so I have no idea. I have no idea the the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no way of figuring it out. So I can I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen. Throw me one hundred dollars every time I come down. Okay, and the way I come to this number is because. Round trip, it's about two and a half hours of driving. Right? I'm there the entire day, and uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me a hundred bucks to kind of cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor. So I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, $100 every time you come, you're not exactly profiting there. <laughs> and, in, and including not going to or working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. So just to flat out say he got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. <laughs> like, it's ha I guess it's half truth. It's a half truth. Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half truth. You know? Um... So when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like you went to conventions and uh, you paid for things. Again, like you go to conventions, you got to take time from work, which is I'm not getting paid for work. We went to conventions, he's got an injury. He says a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you, as you know, <laughs> uh, and do whatever I could to help. I was I was coming as... Not, it's not just like, hey, Phil, take me on this trip, and I'll fuck around, and I'll sit by the pool. You know, it was, uh, you know, came as basically to assist him in his business, as he likes to call it, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, it's not me. That wasn't me complaining about, like, I should have gotten this, I should have gotten that, or anything else. It's just, like, again, it, it gets out there. He got half of what's made. But there's many more details in there that... Uh, you know, are not, are not given. Now, in regards to Project 7, all right, which is the one thing 
that honestly, you know, didn't go right and people could say, okay, well, you know, people didn't get paid or whatever. Up front, we had meetings. Two of them, not one, two fucking meetings up front before we even started production of Project 7 on making money on it. And it was going to be that I was going to make the, the ad revenue on the videos, but we were going to try to sell the Project 7 t-shirts and whatever we sold, we would get an equal cut depending on who financed them. And who financed them? Me and Howard. We were the two people who financed them in the end because um, we had to make those, those t-shirts up front before we could actually sell them. It wasn't like today on Teespring where you could just have them be made on the fly. Instead, back then, that didn't even exist. There was nothing like Teespring. You had to make the t-shirts early, pay for them up front, and then sell them. And we had plans to go to conventions and sell them and do all this stuff. Respect the Pack didn't want any money at all. I had asked them up front, what do you guys want out of this? And they said, we want exposure. We want our channels on YouTube to get exposure as a result of working on the project with you. And then, I, then the one thing that we all collectively agreed on was that we were going to eventually, when we finished the series, make a DVD set and try to sell that and make big money on that because that could be a really cool collectible that viewers want is a, a DVD set where we could, you know, who knows what the production cost is, 10 bucks, we could sell it for 20 25 and then we would split all that amongst all of us as profit. And this would be, if it was successful, the first of future collaborations where we could do other projects and explode out there and do spinoffs and all kinds of stuff. And I was totally okay with that. All right. <clears throat> And that was all what our plans were up front. There was never discussion that people were going to get paid based on how the videos performed on YouTube. There was never discussion about how much money anyone's investing in the series. There was never discussion about anyone getting a paycheck out of it. Ever. So I had a conversation, like Howard said, I had a conversation with Phil. I said, listen, you have to make it worth their while, man. Throw them money. And I'm not saying throw them like thousands of dollars. There's already been, at this point, there was already four episodes that had come out. Right? Yeah. Because we did four, four episodes that come out. So I said, listen, just divvy up the money. There's five people in this. There's only five people, the crew and, and the whole the whole cast, okay? Yeah. The video's made a lot of money. If you if you uh, look at the views, the amount of views, he gets paid on views. It's like $2 for every thousand views that he gets. So simply, you know, figure out how much you made off all these videos. I know that Phil, sp Phil spent a lot of money on props and stuff, so subtract all the costs. That's fair, right? Subtract yeah. all your costs, then you have a number, and then split it the five ways and throw them the cash. Yep. And, and offer, you know, offer that to them. There's no guarantee that they're going to you know, continue with the series, but hey, man, at least try. And it's, I think that's fair. His response, they don't want money. They don't want, they, they don't want any money after this. Respect the pack didn't want any money at all. I had asked them up front, what do you guys want out of this? And they said, we want exposure. Based yeah. on what he says, they told him that. Yeah. And then I asked them about it and they said he didn't even, he didn't even talk to them. And this is, yeah, this no is what I mean. There's so no conversation. Right. So, and then this, the, so, so what people, what you guys, what everyone has to realize is this is, this is like a whole bunch of things that has happened in the past that just it just irritates people because yeah. now what ends up happening is it's like do you value money more than our friendship because if that's the case then why am i even here right you know all right so and, let me ask you did you get anything out of the project seven? First of all let's yeah we're gonna talk about that not i didn't get shit out of project seven so no one got paid now here's the thing i got paid john got paid <laughs> i got my percentage yeah there was a there at that time period. There was a point where my car had broken down, and I needed to get. Actually, I bought. I got, yeah, I got a used car. I bought another car at that time. So I go, Phil. Listen, I'm not coming to your house because I can't. I have no car. Uh, if you want me to come, throw me my percentage from the Project Seven, and I'll use that cash towards a new a new car. And so yep. I got my money. But there's you know three other people, you guys, that got zero. You see what I mean? It's in, this is insanity. But this is how I guess these guys were thinking. They thought that Project 7 was going to be some giant cash cow that was going to get them rich and famous or something. I don't fucking know. But for anyone to come at me and say that I did anything dishonest when in reality I was the most upfront fucking guy possible in that whole situation. You liar, you. I'm good at lying. <laughs> All right, let's continue here. I wanted to hit an 11-year-old girl. You're right. I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face. I cop up to that one. No! What the fuck are you talking about? You're 11? Yes. Please go in 
And your parents bought you a gaming PC? What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Probably because I'm Poggy Wolf. You click on it, just so you know. You click on it, ah. Oh. Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. Ah, 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 ah. This all spawned from two years ago. I was playing this stupid VR chat thing, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what it is. Um, what it's supposed to be. And there was a girl on there who obviously should not have been playing VR chat unsupervised. You could tell she was probably like 11 years old. Probably accurate. That's about how old she sounded. Why the fuck her parents are letting her play VR chat? The world of disgusting people going in there saying swears and sexual things and all kinds of fucked up stuff, right? Um, that's just crazy, right? But there was a girl who I walked into a room... And literally just became an insane brat insulting me and saying nasty shit to me. I didn't even say a word. And she was saying like nasty shit direct to me. I was like, damn, you know, that girl needs a fucking smack or something. I don't even remember exactly what I said. But Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. But it was a reactionary thing basically saying, you know, she needs, she, her, she needs a smack because if that was me in my day when I was growing up and I was a kid, if I acted like that, my parents would smack me right in the head. That's just how it was back then. You know, today, God forbid anyone ever touch a kid, but back then that's how it was. You get disciplined for acting like a shithead to people. Um, you know, so I made a comment, off-the-cuff comment about that. It wasn't to the kid, by the way. It was a private comment. It wasn't like I ran up to the kid's face and insulted the kid. It was just to my streaming audience. I said, damn, you know, that girl deserves a smack for acting like that. And they twisted that into Phil wants to beat up an 11-year-old girl. What the fuck? Now, if I had actually said on stream I want to beat up an 11-year-old girl, do you think I'd be on Twitch today? Of course not. They would have banned me. But I didn't say that. It was an off-the-cuff comment. You're, you, it's stupidity. It's absolute stupidity that things that people say and twist the shit into. <laughs> Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Every statement in that is false. All right, besides maybe my name. Stole, I didn't steal anything. What they're talking about is a Patreon goal level that was hit for one month in the summer of like 2015. Maybe it was 2016, but I'm almost positive it was as far back as 2015. Not stole, it was raised legitimately via a Patreon goal level. All right. Fan donations, they weren't fan donations. They were Patreon contributions. That's different. That went towards a Project 7 reboot. Wrong. It wasn't for a Project 7 reboot. It was for me to take some time out that month to do a Project 7 reboot trailer. Trailer. A trailer that was probably going to be 30 seconds long. Okay? Bullshit! You know, Phil did it. He masturbated in front of thousands of children. What? First of all, when do I have thousands of children on my stream ever? Never. When do I have thousands of people on my stream? Never. When? What the fuck are you talking about? This happened during a pre-stream, which is the, the intro that I run before I actually put out the actual content that I'm streaming. So this happened within the first, you know, 15 minutes before I started talking. The mic was muted. There wasn't showing the screen a gameplay. It wasn't supposed to be showing me on the screen. Duh. That's why it was an accident. Um, I, Essentially, if I remember correctly, it was probably about 70 people top. 70 who were actually on the stream. And most people weren't paying attention to the stream because they were just chatting amongst themselves in the stream chat because it was just playing this PS4 dashboard music while the pre-stream was going. Um... So how on earth, I masturbated in front of thousands of children? Where the fuck did that come from? All right, here's a, here's a, a legit question. Someone tipped me a dollar and asked, did I get Almighty Tevin kicked off of Twitch TV? No, I wholeheartedly will 100% tell you to your face, look into the camera as I say it as well, in case someone said, oh, Phil wasn't looking into the camera. I didn't get Tevin banned from Twitch. I had nothing to do with it at all. Zero. I didn't even know about it until after the fact people came into my chat and told me. What happened is he pissed off people. Like he, when you do stuff that not only negatively affects me, but affects other people, you piss off the wrong people, man. And you got to understand that. Like people will 
eventually hold you accountable for shit that you've done. Burn in hell, Burnell. And now I'm gonna burn in hell for the rest of eternity because of it. You can't change who you are, I guess. <laughs>